Good morning, and welcome to First Christian Church in Denton, Texas. We welcome all the members and friends of this congregation, and we give a special welcome to those who are joining us this morning across technology. We pray that you will find inspiration and words to live by today. And today, in the life of this church, we celebrate it as Children's Sunday, you just heard Jack and Rory Duncan as they brought us all together with a prelude, and we will have other children from this family of faith throughout the service this morning. I invite you to register your attendance uh, by commenting in the chat or by clicking on the link below. And we gather here in the presence of the Holy Spirit and pray blessings on all of us as we look forward to the coming week. Today I want to share with you a couple of announcements. The Envision community will meet online and in person at 6 p.m. this evening. The Disciple Women will meet online Tuesday evening at 7. And Faith and Food will meet for their virtual fellowship and faith discussion, discussion beginning at 7 o'clock uh, this Sunday. Uh, let me be very clear. We need no more candy. For trick or trunk, you all have responded admirably, and we have plenty. Uh, but I will remind you, next week uh, is the change of time, and we will be falling back. That is, you move your clock back one hour, uh, or you'll be tuning in an hour soon and getting a blank screen. But we remind you to do that. So let us come, let us gather uh, in worship this day. And the Lord be with you. And with your Let us all join together in our hymn of praise, hymn number 511. Strong, gentle children.
Let us pray. We give thanks, loving Father, that we can gather in many places today to worship you. We give thanks for the children. Help us not only be examples, but follow their example of participation as we pray together the prayer Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Typically, children's message means that I am sharing a message with you. But because it's children's Sabbath, the children are going to share with us this morning. to have the children participate in the services. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you for the children of this church and children all over the world. Help us to be the village that raises them. Be with our kids and as always, help us to be the best kids we can be. Amen. He has shown you, O oh mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. He has shown you.
We come to this time in our service when we gather together and we offer up prayers as a community. We offer up prayers from our own hearts and souls. We pray not only for ourselves and others, but for this world and all of creation. So at this time, let us ready ourselves. Let us ready our souls to be in prayer with our God. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator of all that we see and hear and feel, all that we taste and know, comes from your creative hands. And we pause this day and give thanks for all of creation and for everyone created in your image. O oh God, in the presence of your Holy Spirit, we realize that we are a part of a global community, a, a global family. Hear our prayers for all. And on this special day within the life of this congregation, when we celebrate the children of our faith and our faith family here. We lift up children around the world. Oh God, grant us the adults, grant us the leaders, grant us with power and privilege and all those other things, the wisdom to offer to our children not pathways to power, but journeys toward love and relationship. Journeys towards compassion, of understanding one another, of lifting each other up. Help us, O oh God, to understand with the wisdom that you can give us that the best way to do that is not only to tell them, but to show them. Let them witness those things in our lives as we live. Grant us the wisdom to find ways to aid the struggles that go on in this world. To find peace within the violence that is so pandemic around us. Understanding when we are so polarized from one another. Give us the wisdom, O oh God, to find answers to the abuse. So relevant, so, so, so much a part of our world. Give us the wisdom, O oh God, to be creative in ways that brings joy to this world and to the children of this world. The children are not the future, O oh God. It is our relationship with them now that colors the future that is to come. Remind us, show us the importance of that role. And we gather today, O oh God, praying for those who are in need. Those whose health has failed them, those who struggle with their mental health, those who struggle emotionally, those who feel broken and beaten by this world. We pray for them healing, understanding, wholeness. And not of, if not body, O oh God, then, then in spirit. Hear us as we pray for the leaders of this world. Hear us as we pray for peace. 
hear us as we pray for justice. Hear our prayers this day, O God. For we pray them in the name of your Son. And we all say, Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that very, very much. Before I begin this morning, I also want to thank Aliana and Opal Stevens for lighting our candles this morning. And then for uh, the Laura Sh uh, Shaver children, Anthony, Reuben, Christian, John, Luke, Jeremiah, and Noah, uh, for their sharing during the children's message. We appreciate uh, the participation of all the kids in the service today. So as we prepare for the sermon today, let us turn our hearts and our minds and our souls to the Word of God. And this morning we will be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. Let us hear these words. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be the children of God. Blessed are those persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
and blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. May God add God's richest blessing to our hearing and to our understanding. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. And God, may this word be a light unto the paths that we will travel in the days to come. And once again, when I awoke this morning, you granted me the ability to speak. I pray once again that you will grant me the wisdom to preach. For we pray these things in Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. What daunting and powerful words these are that we read this morning. So often familiar scriptures, ones that we have heard time and again, seem to lose their oomph. They seem to lose the surprise, the vigor of hearing and discovering something new. This morning, having read and heard these simple, intimate words, let's, let's, let's go on a journey. Let's take an adventure and perhaps discover something unfamiliar, or at the very least, remember why it is that we, that we are here. We know when, when Jesus saw the large crowds, He took the disciples up on a mountainside, and He found a rock, and He sat down, and He began to teach. To teach them the Beatitudes. I mean, this is the beginning of Jesus' teaching to his disciples. How would you like to be one of the disciples listening to this charge for the rest of your life? I know when, when I read these words, I find them a bit intimidating. In a way, even disheartening. I mean, who in this world can do all of these things, follow all of these commands? Certainly not me. How about you? Yet, on this adventure, let me suggest this to us, to you and to me. Let me suggest that we not read these words as imperatives or commands, but rather let them flow over us as descriptive, as descriptions of the way things are in the realm that Jesus comes to share. Let us read not as words of power from a ruler writing into this story on the back of a white stallion, but rather as words describing an alternative way of living shared by one riding into the story on the back of a donkey. Let us not read them as edicts coming down from on high by one who rules from a golden throne, but rather from a teacher, one who sits on a rock, on a mountainside, and teaches things can be different than they are. And here is what that looks like. It would do us well to understand the Beatitudes as a whole, rather than individually, that each is related to the other and they build upon one another. Let us know the Beatitudes are not meant for a few, but they are meant for everyone. They invite us in a way of being in the world that leads us to a particular practice, a way of recognizing and living life. 
Charles Cook suggests these principles for the understanding of the Beatitudes. He, he suggests three principles for understanding the, uh, that, that we can live into practicing the Beatitudes. And he suggests those three principles as simplicity, hopefulness, and compassion. Responding to Jesus' words has little to do with a lack of sophistication. It has to do with hearing the words of Jesus for what they are, not what we would prefer them to be. To approach the Beatitudes simply is to hear the words clearly without prejudice and to know the words are spoken directly to us. We do receive more courage than fear, don't we? When we hear Jesus saying, you are blessed in this life whenever you demonstrate humility. It brings a peaceful presence. It opens our hearts to others and shows mercy to those who cry out. Hearing Jesus' words simply is the first step for living into the spirit of the Beatitudes. Jorgon Moltmann stated the death knell of, uh, of the heart is when the overall attitude moves from anger to cynicism. And he says cynicism differs from anger. Cynicism has decided to accept whatever is regardless of the consequences. Cynicism offers little hope that things will get better. The Beatitudes invite us to the opposite point of view, to Cook's second principle, and that is hopefulness. When we are hopeful, we stand in the world sure of the possibility that the day will come when mercy and humility and peace and love are the descriptions of what it means to be alive. And to live. The third principle of beatitude living is compassion. Compassion is not associated with either pity or sympathy, it goes deeper. While pity means we may feel sorry for a person, and sympathy means we may understand their plight and may offer some advice, compassion is different than either one of those. Henry, out, Henry Nouwen offers us this. He says, Compassion grows with the inner recognition that your neighbor shares your humanity with you. This partnership cuts through all walls which might have kept you separate, across all barriers of land and language, wealth and poverty, knowledge and ignorance. We are one, created from the same dust, subject to the same laws, destined for the same end. We are distinct. But most importantly, we share the gift of being created in God's image. Thus, we belong to one family. Compassion requires not walking the same path with a companion, but walking in his or her shoes. In reading the Beatitudes with simplicity and hopefulness and compassion, we understand in the beloved community that we are not called to do each of these as commands, but rather to understand them as the way things are in this alternative community to much of this world. We are called to let them be descriptive of our lives as individuals and as community. It describes the way that kingdom is alive in this world today. Now I want you to listen. I invite you to listen to what I'm about to read. I want you to listen for where your life comes alive. I want you to listen for what ignites your passion. 
I want you to listen for what stirs your soul. I want you to listen to what speaks to your spirit. Listen. Come all of you whom the world says lacks something. Those of you who have no place of privilege for with our God you will be blessed. You will have the kingdom of God. Come you who are gentle and meek. Those of you who are not sure. Those of you that work behind the scenes for with our God you will be blessed. For when you sit at the banquet of heaven, your witness on earth will be known. It will be remembered. Come all of you who mourn, those of you grieving, those of you who have suffered great loss. For with our God you will be blessed. For in this community of faith you will be comforted. Come all of you who hunger and thirst for what is honorable, those with justice written on your hearts, those that advocate where there is none, for with our God you will be blessed. For your calling, your witness will make you satisfied. Come all of you who have mercy, those of you that reach out with open arms of hospitality and compassion, for with our God you will be blessed for your lives and your mission will bring you welcome. Come all of you that are pure in heart, those of you that pray and discern and listen and accept God's call upon your life, you that go out and serve, for with our God you will be blessed. For you shall see God at every turn, for you shall see the extraordinary in the ordinary, for you will rejoice and know God's presence. Come all of you the seekers, the makers of peace, those of you that call for plowshares, those of you that call for pruning hicks, those of you that call for shalom. For with our God, you will be blessed. For God will look upon you with favor. For you will be the children of God. Come all of you, the ones put down, broken with violence and power, pushed to the edge. Those of you who have stood up and gave witness and received the scorn of the people. For with our God, you will be blessed. For when right is shown to be right, when spirit is shown to be spirit, when the aha moment comes for this world, we will know and see the kingdom of God. Where have you been? Come one and all. No matter your place, no matter your struggle, no matter your background or questions or doubts. For with our God you will be blessed. For we are one in God's holy creation. Let us be present with our God, working and living and sharing with one another. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad. Let us trust our God and know that life is good. Who is God calling you to be? Who is God calling you to be right now? How radical will you answer those questions in your life. Take your passion. Take what stirs in your soul. Take your invigorated spirit to the world in words and deeds 
and like Jesus. Let them be simple, hopeful, compassionate words. Shared describing what the realm of the alternative community, the kingdom in this world but not of this world, what that is really, really like. The beloved community awaits you. It awaits you sitting on the rock and sharing with the world what the life Jesus teaches us is all about. Simple, hopeful, and compassionate. Oh God, Hear our words. Lead us this day. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. We continue in our worship this morning, preparing for our hymn of communion. Won't you join in and listen? as we do.
As we come to our invitation to discipleship this morning, I would invite us to remember all of our blessings. You have seen the wonderful blessings that we have here at First Christian Denton with our children. You've seen and you've heard from them. And then we've also heard about the many blessings that we've been given in the Beatitudes. What a privilege it is to be called a child of God. I invite you to remember the work of this church in your offering this morning, that we might gratefully live into the calling God has for our church in this community. You may make your contribution by visiting www.fccdenton.org giving, by setting up a sustaining gift through your bank's bill pay future, or by mailing a check to the church office. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. As you consider your offering of time, talent, and treasure this morning, let us join in our closing hymn, number 56, verses 1 and 4, for the beauty of the earth. As we come to the end of our service, I certainly want to thank uh, our singers this morning, Savannah and Sierra, Susan and Charlotte, for adding so much to our worship this day. We are glad you are here with us. We certainly want to thank again all of the children who took part in the service this morning. Wasn't it wonderful to hear and see them? And to Austin and David who saved the day earlier today by getting us online. And we thank you, too, for all that you do to keep us in everyone's presence. So we come and we gather. We know that what was shared with us today is what that realm can look like in our lives individually and in the life of this church. May we be inspired by God's words in the days to come to share those words and that much. For let us remember that shoulder you touch, the words of love that you share may be the only time in this week that that person knows the love of God. Bless you and keep you in the days to come. For we pray these things in Jesus' name and we all say, Amen. Amen.